Welcome back to another Mr. Lee Teaches YouTube tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how to use the templates to create documents in Google Docs and then also to use the Explore tool. So let's get started. So if you go to straight up Google Docs or docs.google.com, uh, this will be the page you get. And you'll see at the top there's like a, a banner of some templates, suggestions on, on pre done uh, templates. You can also click on the template gallery and pull up more options. So you have resumes, uh, different things for, for work, uh, that kind of thing. So we'll just pick a random one. Um, I kind of like that one. So I'll click that one. And it's going to pull up a blank document with, well, not so much blank, but with you know the graphics in place and then where everything would go. And so I don't need a two pager, so I'm going to delete all of that. And so now I have a one pager, and I actually already have what I want typed up. And so I'm just going to copy and paste it in here. So I'm going to go in and highlight all of this. And if you were wanting to just make a blank document, you could just delete all of that. But I've already got my, what I want, so I'm going to paste it in just like that. And so you see, I've already cited some things in it, and I'm going to talk about how we can do that. Uh, so we're going to look at the Explore tool now. You can go to Tools and Explore, or you can go down here to the bottom corner and just click on that. So you can go to either way. It pulls up the same Explore tool. And what it does is it actually looks through your document and gives you suggestions based on what you've written in your document. So I'm talking about digital citizenship in this document. And so the first topic that it suggests is digital citizenship. So if I click on that, it pulls up web results. And so I can go through here and look at these web results. And if I want to take a look at this one, I can click on it. It'll open in a new tab. So I haven't lost my work. I haven't lost anywhere. And I can look through here. And let's just say that you or your student wants to use some of this. Uh, they'll read through here. And they can come in here and make the notes that they want to make in their own words. So in my own words. And then they can also cite it straight through here. So what we can actually do is pick, if we go to the very top where it says web results and click on the three dots, we can actually pick which style of formatting we want our citations in. And then I'm going to go down. This is the one I click. So I'm going to click the, the, the quote symbol in the corner and it's going to cite it as a footnote. And you see it put the number three here and then down here it cited that resource. So I don't have to cite it. I don't have to know how to go in and pull the information. It'll cite it for me if it is a website. Um, it will not do this for images and I'll show you that in just a second. So uh, if I wanted to move this though I can actually highlight that three and then copy and paste over here. So if you cite something incorrectly or you put the citation at the wrong spot because you forget to move your cursor you can always copy and paste it and move it. Um, but we can also do images from here too and there's a couple things I want to point out with the images. So I can click on the images and go in here and actually click and drag an image over. And the problem with that is, one, the image comes over very nicely, but it doesn't cite it. Uh, and there's no way to cite it, uh, even if I do the insert image. And so let's take a look at how we can use digital citizenship to grab these images. And it's a great way to teach your students, too. So I want to look at, well, let's just use this one. If I click on the image, it pulls it up and it tells me at the very bottom, image is labeled for com commercial use with modification. So this would be an okay image to use anywhere you want it because it's not copyrighted. If you have one that is copyrighted, it'll tell you that down there too. Uh, so I can see that. I can say, okay, this one's free to use. And then I can go to insert and it'll actually insert the image. And then once it's inserted, I can click on it. And like we talked about last week, if I click on a corner, it won't change the aspect ratio and I can resize it to the size I want. We can also just search for anything we want in here. So if I wanted to find a picture of a cell phone, I can actually look for cell phone in images and then I'll find the one I want. We'll use this one. I'll click on it. 
image is labeled for commercial use with modifications. So I can use this one. I'm going to insert it. And I want to shrink it a whole lot. And I want to wrap text. And I want to move it up a little bit and over. Because I want everything on one page for this demonstration. So we'll make it a little smaller. And there we go. So I can actually make it a little bigger now, actually, and maybe make it, well, I can play with the formatting and make it look right later. But if we want to actually cite this image, we would have to go and click on the image. And then if I click change, then I can copy this web address. And if I wanted to, I could paste it in here or I could do my own citation for that image um, to give credit where credit's due for the image use. And so you can always click on it and have that link there but you can also copy it and paste it. Oops. And then if I wanted to, once I've got the web address for the image there, I can remove that image. So now it's not linked back to the web page, but I do have the web page cited on my document. Um, if I have anything in my Google Drive that is pertaining to digital citizens or cell phones, actually. Um, so if I want to go back to digital citizenship, it's going to search my Google Drive. So all the stuff I have in my Google Drive that pertains to digital citizenship, I can search for right here too. So if I wanted to pull in a document that I've made for digital citizenship, uh, I can open it from here, opens in a new tab. I could then put a link back into here if I wanted to, to make a hyperdoc or nest a couple documents inside of here as resources. Uh, it all depends on what you're making. So. Um, that's the explore tool in a nutshell. Uh, that's also how to use some templates uh, to make your stuff look a little fancier. So I hope this helps you and I will talk to you again soon.